Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm your friend in SciXO. Long time no say. Today, I'm going to lead you guys to do a fully understand on the OCR model for reading chase. All right. So to be specific, it is to use the deep learning technique to recognize those characters on the images, like like this. You know, before the Deep learning, uh, things like this would be possible when you only using the software to solve that. This uh, for now it is possible. Okay, let's go on. Introduction. This example demonstrates a simple OCR model built with a functional API. Apart from combining CN and RN, it also illustrates how you can instantiate a new layer and use it as an endpoint layer for implementing the CTC loss. Uh, for a dedicated guide, you could uh, visit that page, but uh, we don't want to do that. Let's just uh, to run it. First, we need to import some modules or packages. We need to import the OS, import the LamPy, import the Multiplotlib, and the most important one, the Tensorflow. Okay, after that we should load our data. Uh, the data is nothing but a bunch of uh, a bunch of images like this, and it got one thousand forty images. And for each images, the length of that file is a label, and the picture itself is an image. So um, we need to do a pre-processing to get that to get those images and the labels back. So let's run this code the sale of code. By running that, we could get all those images back and all those labels back. And for each label, if you, if you care about that, I could just print it out for you. For example, I could print out the first five labels back. And this is what you get. Something like this. Just a bunch of strings. Then we're going to do a pre-processing. Uh, why we need to do this? Because we will at least maintain two dictionaries. Uh, the first dictionary, it's uh, uh, the K is the characters. And the value is uh, integers. For, uh, the third, second uh, dictionary, keys, is uh, integers. And the value is the characters. Why we do this? Because uh, normally when we are doing the machine learning or deep learning, we want to convert all those informations to pure integers. So um, uh, that's that's why we need the first uh, dictionary, string to integers. And also when we have done, when we did all those uh, calculations, uh, we need to uh, get the integers back to uh, the original information. For example, here it's uh, characters. So that's why we need the second uh, dictionary. And also, uh, we need to split the data into two groups or two sets, the training set and the uh, valid set or test set, uh, whatever you call it. Um, so after that, we should be able to get the train and valid to two different uh, sets. And also for this problem, I mean, yeah, for this problem, the input is actually the image, but we cannot uh, just row in the row image batch data to our machine learning model. So uh, at least we need to convert it to tensors or to arrays or to numbers. How can we do that? First, we uh, read that image file, then we decode that uh, image file. Uh, uh, thankfully, we got the TensorFlow to do the work for us, so we don't have to, you know, worry about it that uh, stuff too much. We just had, we just need to um, use a few of functions that TensorFlow provided for us. Um, then we can get the, for example, here it's a tensor property. The labor here is also a, a, a tensor. Okay, I just want to run this self code. After that, uh, uh, after that, we need to do the same operations. I mean, convert all those images and the labels to tensors to every item on our, on our training set and uh, test set. How do we do that? We create a, a data set objects. It's just an, another abstract uh, conception uh, built by those uh, machine learning experts. So after this, if you uh, fed your data uh, to this function, tf.data.dataset, you would be able to uh, fed your data to the machine learning model uh, more efficiently because you, you, you don't have to worry about uh, uh, 
how to set the the pitch, how to split your data into um, into a lot of uh, small chunks. So uh, whatever you just uh, you just want to call this uh, functions and convert it to a uh, to an object called uh, dataset that was built inside of the TensorFlow framework. So let's just uh, run this. Then you probably want to visualize the data because you uh, you don't have a general idea about the data unless you unless you print it out no matter it's a string or it's a it's an image so here we go we got all those uh, images and the labels back uh, here you can see an interesting fact how can you get such a uh, data you could say for batch in train dataset dot take one and after that you would get uh, this this is like a dictionary uh, you get the image and the uh, labels back and you just print it out uh, then we can start to define our deep learning neural network how can we do that here you just uh, you just define a ctc layer you don't have to uh, actually figure out the city what what is the city say you don't have to do that you just want to follow this tutorial and get a basic understanding on those stuffs because you don't want to into a very deep level into this that doesn't necessarily um, helpful for you to um, create a simple model uh, here he just uh, created a CTC layer. Then uh, this layer is inherited from the layers that layer. Then it got an initiate function. This function will take a lamb. Mm, okay. Then we define a loss function. The loss function is just another built-in function in the carrier string work called CTC bunch cost. Then we define a call function, you know, for, for each calculation, uh, the framework will call this function. So what does this function actually uh, take as the uh, y choose, the actually actual y value and the y portion value. Uh, it will take two, takes, takes the two values. Then how do, how do we do the calculation? The Pitch lines equal to tf dot cast from a shape value. The input length equal to the prediction shape value. The label length equal to the choose label value. Actually, I think the input length would be just equal to the label length. So here, no matter you use the y choose or y predict, they it, they they are identically equal. Then you go on. Do another calculation to get the input length. Uh, I couldn't actually understand this, but I think it's just uh, some calculations out there. Then we call the loss function here by fit it's the uh, y choose, y product, the input length and the label length. Uh, after that, we need to call another function add loss to add this 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 uh the, the loss that we get by calling this function once uh in the end we return the y product value anyway this is just a self-defined city layer i personally believe that maybe got a, a predefined layer out of somewhere we don't have to define it ourselves but uh this is just an example in here to uh, show us how can we uh, define a custom canvas layer. Then this is what the real model looks like the or inside of the build model. First we need the input to that uh, model, the input image. This layer could be equal to layers that input. We define the input layer with the shape of image width and image height and with exactly one image. Uh, the lamb would be equal to image. The type is float32. And then we define the labels. The labels actually, uh, it's, it's actually the, the prediction layer or the final layer, as I think. Uh, but, uh, but I don't know. Maybe that's just uh, another input. I don't know. Layers that input equal to label, shape equal to, I don't know, type equal to float32. The first convolutional block is x equal to layers that convolutional 2D with the kernel of, no, with the neurons of 32 and with the kernel 3 times 3. The activation function is a RELU activation function. Um, the kernel initializer 
uh, would be equal to this. I, I I have never seen such a thing before, but I think uh, it's just another parameters. Don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, it has no uh, big deals out there. And I personally believe that if you comment this line out, this code will still work. Um, then the padding equal to same, the lamb equal to convolutional one. And for this, this, this is not a, uh, this is a layer, but uh, it's also a function. This function has to have a input. So the input would be the input image because it's a convolutional layer. This layer will only work on uh, image matrix or image data. So that's why you need to give it an input of the image. Then we define another uh, layer. This layer is a max porting 2D layer. Uh, for this layer, it has a kernel of 2 times 2 and got a lamb of pore 1. This lamb is is actually you can you can give it a lamb of whatever you like. Also, this uh, max porting layer or function has to get a input which is coming from the uh, from from this layer because this this function will return you an x and we will take this x as the second layer input in the end we still return an x okay then we define the second convolutional block for this block we have 64 neurons and the kernel is 3 times 3. The activation function is RELU. The kernel initializer equal to hey normal. Um, the pattern equal to same. It's just another convolutional layer. It's just the same as the previous one. It it also got a max porting 2D. So why we do the two, uh, why we add two convolutional block? Because we want to uh, get some apps, we want to get some abstract uh, features out from those, uh, you know, those images. We want to get some ab abstract features from those images. That's why we use the two convolutional 2D layer. Uh, then we, what do we need to do? We have to we have used the two max pore, pore with pore size and uh, trace two. Hence, down sample the feature maps are four times smaller. The number of filters in the last layer is 64, reshape accordingly before passing the output to the RNN part of the model. Uh, it says that, that now or X is six times smaller than the original Im image. So that's why we uh, need to define the new shape. Go to image width divided by two, image height divided by two, and then for each e image height, he just did a multiplication with 64. Why he wa want to do that? I don't know. Um, then he say he said x equal to layers that reshape layers that reshape the target shape equal to new shape and the lamb equal to reshape it will take the previous x output. Then he just defined a dense layer or with with the cur with the neurons of um sixty four the action activation equal to r e l u the dense and we will limit the dense layer one. Then we did we do a we do a drop out with a ratio number of zero point two. Mm, I think after this after those those after these operations the two D matrix values or the two D vectors uh, would now become one dimensional vector which is an array. So that's why we can use RN. The RN means the recurrent neural network it's probably working on one dimensional arrays so uh anyway we just wanna uh, we just wanna call another layers uh, which is called a bidirectional layer then for this layer uh we will use a uh, lstm lstm is just another uh, layer for uh, long term, long short term memory. Uh, just another uh, layer used for a long series of data or used for a sequence of data. Uh, for this one, if you want to use the LSTM, you must set the return sequences to true because you want to get the result back. Uh, anyway, we just add two layers of that. Then we 
we define the output layer as a it's a dense layer with a length of uh, characters plus one and the activation function would be equal to softmax and in the end we define a loss layer uh, define a ctc layer for calculating the ctc loss at each step uh, then we combine it together to uh, form a Canvas model. Uh, how how do we do that? We say the input equal to two stuffs the im the input image and the labels. Yeah, that's 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 probably right. And the output it's it's the output which is a CTC loss layer. Uh, then we call a optimizer and we compile this model which is to do a comp to get a model we build that model and we do a summary let's run this model and say what would happen um, uh, as you can see this is a not so complex model but still has a lot of layers inside of uh, what makes me confused is that uh, he takes the input image and the labels together as uh, as the inputs uh, then outputs the uh, outputs as uh, that that makes sense. I, I thought that he would just want to input the pure image as input, then output the labels. That's what I was thinking about. Clearly, he thinks different than me. Um, then we do the training. First, we define the apples. Then there's something that I have never seen. Carol's callbacks that early stopping. This is a new idea. So, Anyways, just uh, let, let's just do it. At least we know that the model fit. It's uh, uh, it's uh, actually the start of the of the training. Uh, for this function, we give it the train dataset and we give it the validation dataset. Uh, we define the pokes and we define the callbacks. Mm, then we can start to do the training. Uh, as you can see, the training process is actually quite uh, slow. So I'm gonna I'm going to stop it and change the pokes to. Let's set it to two i don't have that much time to wait for it so i'll just train it for two loops okay after the training we got a very high loss which is not a good idea in their way the loss should be as smaller as possible uh, then we do the inf inference actually uh, we do the prediction how do we do that first we say the prediction model equal to the carrots that models that model uh, the model get the layers uh, the image layer as the input then the model that layer the lamb of uh, dense 2 as the output okay this is more uh, this is more reasonable for us because actually this is what we uh, fairly would want the to let the input as an image to let the output as an uh, as a label so we def uh, we have defined the prediction model then we need to uh, decode the bunch predictions uh, in other words we want to mm, convert the those those numbers back to strings i guess that's that's why we need this function that's why it called uh, that's why it was lamb the code okay let's check the results on some validation samples bunch in validation dataset one we get the images and the labels then we do the prediction how do we do that we say prediction model that predicts uh, with uh, input the images and we call this function decode batch predictions to convert the the numeric uh, uh, results back to strings or back to text te texts anyway let's just uh, uh run this code and say if we can get the right results uh okay uh, this is what we got we got a bunch of online online stuff uh, why this would uh, happen? Well, that's simply because uh, simply because we haven't trained enough Apex, and the model itself um, haven't learned anything yet, or haven't learned anything. Yeah, that's e exactly what I want to say. <laughs> the model uh, needs more training to um, to know those uh, characters on that on those images. Okay, this is today. Today's tutorial. I will see you in the next one. Bye.